Carl says in Czech Republic when he moved yeah. from Azerbaijan. Um, Friday culture, uh, dogs in a general population. In general population. I've been mm-hmm. pronouncing it already. I'm just saying you, it already three times. Yeah, do you still have anything else which you see other than the women <laughs> having more power? <laughs> <laughs> don't label me as sexist. This is going. This is going on air, and I also mm. am thriving to have my uh, mm. own business. I don't want to be like labeled as a mm. sexist guy mm. in the population. Anything else? Uh, well, definitely, food culture is different, right? Mm. Uh, to wake up early in the morning and uh, having breakfast around seven, having lunch at eleven thirty, we're becoming Czechs, no? Uh, when I go back to Azerbaijan, I meet my friends at around 10 o'clock mm-hmm. and sitting in the cafes and looking around and <laughs> they're still cooking at 11 o'clock yeah. and you see like uh, these, uh, these donut kebab places, uh, the guys are still there at 11 o'clock with having more than half of their meat there and you're thinking, boy, am I living in another country or another planet or something? Because after 9 o'clock, you, you would... Uh, in a pl- in a place like Prague, you would only find those small kebab places, maybe some pizza, but you would find food anytime. Mm-hmm. There's not such a thing that kitchen is closed, but you can come here for a beer. That's something. I mean, th- that is only what we can see here. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, that culture is a bit different. But then, on the other hand, also, I remember in 2017, even uh, before I moved to Prague. My uh, cousin came to visit me and we went to, let's say, we were just going to downtown and coming back. It was around 10 o'clock. I told him, I, I think I understood what is he shocked about because bus was empty and there were only like few people <laughs> and it was yeah. completely quiet. Yeah. And we were mm-hmm. going and I told him, yes, this is how Europe is because it is a working day. People are about to go to sleep. And now I want you to look at those buildings and I showed him the buildings and lights were off too. Some people are already sleeping. However, in Azerbaijan, my mom would text me around midnight and uh, or or let's say they would be sitting there and watching. Like for example, today is also Champions League game, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's 9 p.m. here, 12, midnight. My dad is watching the game around 1 a.m. It's a bit different culture and also it depends also the geographical timing right you know exactly yeah so i think the other thing which really fascinated me because i was not aware of this uh the long summers you know the summer time is long in our countries or long in europe not what just you long in month long in the daytime when the sun sets ah yeah 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 it is it is uh, it is longer here right yeah it's, uh, it's longer here but the other opposite is also true like in winter in december 4 p.m. to be in a dark yeah. or like when you wake up it's super dark you know as you know I love my morning exercises how many times I have to run in the morning yeah. and it's dark outside or bike and cold uh, yeah these are the things but you know guess what uh, I was a very sick kid when I was back home mm-hmm. I had a high fever of asthma but when I moved to Europe it just disappeared and because I was already exposed to colder weather, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Latvia, I when I arrived to Latvia in October, I was super cold, and I went to this uh, dormitory manager, Irina. I said, Irina, I'm I'm cold. Can you help me? Uh, she told me we have to wait until end of October, so the heating would be on. Mm-hmm. And in November, it started raining. I was shocked. We don't see rain, uh, uh, raining, snowing. We don't see snow. We probably see snow once in a year in Azerbaijan that would have happened in January, but in November it was already snowy, slippery, you know, this downtown European uh, cities, right? Like mm-hmm. these cobblestones, you are slipping, you know, like it's a slippery. Yeah, it's, uh, these are small things that, you know, like I would call the beauty, you know, you just learn and you become different. Yeah, we have talked uh, much about uh, the cultural shock. Uh, what are the things which you liked, which you really liked when you moved to Czech Republic? Like, hey, I enjoy this and I was missing this my whole life. Oh, uh, 
I don't know how correct it's gonna sound. Mm. My dad gave me my first beer when I was 10 years old. It was a Ukrainian brand called Abolon. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if they're like still producing. I haven't uh, seen that in Europe. I love, I love the taste and smell of uh, of uh, beer. And uh, luckily for us that we have a beer factory right next to us, right? Yeah, Sometimes yeah, twice mm -hmm. a year when they, uh, twice a day when they brew, <laughs> you get this spread smell. Mm -hmm. I love the taste of beer. I like the fact that uh, you can talk about, you know, like you can talk about beer and it's not counted as, or like, you know, having a beer or having a wine, it's not counted as, you know, judgmental to yes. anyone. Yes. Saying that, hey, you're, you seem to be a nice person. Let's discuss this over a beer. It's not. Uh, it's a bit a cultural difference. Of course, I come exactly. from part of a con uh, part of a world where mostly the population are Muslims. It's not an Islamic country, but the countries like a population majority of the population are Muslims. Which let's uh, discuss it over a beer. Might not necessarily sound the right way of doing it so mm -hmm. that's why i would say when i moved to europe i could uh, pronounce it uh, independently and uh, no one uh, without being afraid that someone is gonna judge me because i said hey let's listen for let's a, beer. Go for a beer. yeah yeah i think that's the wonderful experience you can get in czech republic you know when it's summer you take a run you know from point a to point b there's a beer shop na plavka yes na plavka. you can grab your beer you know and uh, refresh you know, I used to like uh, my cycling when I was uh, staying in Prague. Okay. Uh, Which was your favorite track? Yes, cycling along Naplavka, going down to the next village. I don't know the name of the village. It's 25 kilometers from Muskeg. Ah, you mean, wait, uh, do mm. you mean uh, the Unatice? Like the one that they have also in Otiske beer? Yes, like the Troika? last stop, there is yeah, a, there yeah, is a yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a nice one. Yeah, that's so I could cycle nice to that one. and I drink beer, then I come back. And um, or on the over way, stop, one day I yeah, want stop. to stop on the way yeah. I, I, you know what i actually did that uh, i didn't go to unosis i mm -hmm. went to kralupe yes that yes yeah, i also yeah, went that, that side that also one, that one yes yeah. that one mm -hmm. so if i think a week maybe 10 days before my son was born i mm -hmm. told my wife give me one of one day free so she gave me one day free you know how the last days are i mean you don't know but you will know maybe in the future <laughs> yeah. last days are like stressful i took one day off Mm -hmm. And I biked there, and that, I think at that day I did like about 40 kilometers of biking. Only one small, let's say, part I took with the train back. And uh, yeah, you stop, you stop on the way, you grab your beer, and it doesn't, it was not even fast. I mean, I think around 10 a.m. I was already there, or maybe 11. I don't remember exactly. It was May, if I yeah, it was. It should be May, yeah, because it was like right before my son was born. My son was born like late May, so. It's uh, nice weather around that time, and also spring, you know? It's, uh, exactly, yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming, it's exactly, we are filming. Can't towards, wait, man, can't wait. Spring. I can't definitely wait. want to buy a cycle rack for my car, uh -huh. because I'm planning to join some of the work colleagues and do the 50 kilometers journey between um, Czech Republic and just then, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that people are doing uh, to Grenland. Yeah. That uh, must be... Tell me about the, did you adopt the culture when your son was born? Did you do the Czech culture of drinking to the newborn baby? Uh, first of all, mm. I, I would say that we lived long time with the Russians. Mm -hmm. Long, long time. Uh, which that drinking culture came to us a bit, especially in the celebrations. Like weddings, you have to drink with your friends. New car, you have to drink with your friends. And mm -hmm. we call it wash it off. Yeah. You wash it off. Yes, I knew that when my son was born, I had to celebrate it because I was still part of, and I'm still part of football community in my village. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I was not expecting, they were just texting me, where are you? I'm like, uh, home, just like, you know, trying to put the baby into bed, but we're waiting for you already. Exactly. So I went there, they did it a check way. So they lined up and everyone came and shook my hand and some of them gave me gifts and yeah, they're okay which in return I had to buy them a bottle so I bought a bottle Zelena mm -hmm. it's a village and Zelena and we were going and we we're singing yeah we did it that way uh, well my son was born in Czech Republic he has a uh, Nimburg you know it's a village right uh, he has Czech Rodne Číslo birth number mm -hmm. 
which means I have to be. You know, like how they say in English, when when in Rome, do as Romans do. Yeah. I I totally agree that, and yes, he has to. And for me, he has to learn Czech. Whatever I know that his mother is uh, Slovak, but he has to. He has to learn Czech. Um, he has to be part of this community because at the moment we live here. Yeah, yeah I think that's um, that's a good thing about Czech. How they celebrate when a baby is born. Uh, I remember my experience also. My neighbor, when his son was born, I went there and drink with him and celebrate and uh, congratulate him on that. One thing Czechs know very well how to celebrate. Exactly. And trust me, yeah. uh, just they yesterday. They really love how to celebrate. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday I was watching one, you know, like this uh, YouTube or Instagram. Now they, what I love about it is that the shorts just would come randomly. Mm-hmm. It was a hockey team of I don't know Slavia or something. Mm-hmm. And they were singing one Eastern Slovak song that we are also singing at our bars in the football. It's just Eastern, like, you know, one small song from one part of Slovakia became famous mm-hmm. and the girls were singing it. Ah, it's, uh, it, it was funny. Like, they were, they won and so Czechs know how to celebrate. And especially there is a singing part in it. I'm all in. I don't know how to sing, but I love to sing out loud. Uh, so, as a group, I mean like a chorus you know exactly if you play football even in africa when we are doing high schools or university yeah. games i can tell you the buses you use to go to the inter-university competition or okay. in the high school okay. everyone will be singing and cheering uh, man, those were the good times i can man, tell you the, man this is what we miss in azerbaijan a lot i don't know like uh, now i haven't been living in azerbaijan already over 15 years mm-hmm. hopefully it is changing Turks are singing, Russians are singing, so mm-hmm. I don't know why we never sang, uh, you know. I know Latinos are singing, right? I live by Latinos in the United States, so mm-hmm. this singing culture, especially when you have like a couple of beers and yep. celeb- something to celebrate, celebrate yes. like I remember last year we were in, uh, well, two years ago, we were in this competition and we were terrible. They beat us. <laughs> we won one game over penalties and mm-hmm. I think after s- over, uh, uh, out of 16 teams we were like, 13 or 14 but we were celebrating like we were the champions man it was it was crazy it was crazy uh a lot of emotions there so it's it's nice you know nice things so yeah we have segued way to (laughs) your experience living in czech republic what you like about the country and um what were the cultural shocks now moving on to your professional life what did you study you know what what were your area of study and why did you choose this specific area sure mm. um for me it goes you know like a logical connection my mm. dad uh, has been a son of a trader my grandpa had shops uh, supermarket like a potravini here mm. uh, my dad also had the same so as as of uh, 13 years old i've been helping him selling ice cream selling uh cola you know the cola at that time were just coming with this uh, 200 milliliter uh, bottles, uh, aka I knew how to make money. And they was talking about this, and then I was good at math, mm-hmm. and they were telling me, you know, it looks like you can choose finance, business, administration, because one day you will be doing it. Yeah, I'm 36 years old, still do not have my official business, but I want to, mm-hmm. and you know that I want to. And uh, that's what I studied. I did a master's de- business bachelor degrees in business administration mm-hmm. master in finance i did not just write my thesis because i i <laughs> yeah i had to make different decisions and uh worked in finance for five years at least in a, in almost <laughs> at the name of the country uh, the name of the company mm-hmm. so nice worked uh, five years in finance i re- just recently moved to it and especially to service management side because I did not, uh, well, I don't have a technical background, but I have certain other skills that could be transferable. So now why I think that uh, I want to land in IT and I wanted to land in IT, Mm -hmm. not because of the money, of course, (laughs) like one thing, (laughs) but I think Mm. in one of my good mentors here, he told me, you spend some time in finance. And now when for those big projects, they are talking to IT, they would not know the IT language. Mm-hmm. So go spend some time in IT, you will be the middleman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, and 
like you would be like one product owner or something. I admire that man's mind and I want to pursue that goal that I would be somewhere in, in between because I know finance side and I would know a little bit of IT side. I can help them to understand each other, especially you know how important it is to understand requirement. Up to today, I would see some gap because they do not know how things are working here. They do not. and people in IT would not know how things work in fi finance. Yeah, finance. So yeah. I want to be this middle guy because who knows both and uh, be an asset of a, such a big company like ours. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good career to choose on. Understanding different uh, fields helps you to have uh, a diverse perspective and you have been working with people from different um, diverse backgrounds. Man, six countries. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> exactly. when I when I come mm -hmm. here, it was the same, right? I was supporting Turkey. I supported Africa for two and a half years. I was lucky enough to go to Africa. Uh, majorly was supporting Europe, then Ireland, and now you're. Uh, I'm in IT and I'm supporting uh, United States, American people, completely different. Asia, completely different mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, these. Uh, I think it is a beauty. Like I'm it a is. cosmopolitan person, and I want to. I mean, like how do they call it? Like uh, ad taking advantage of it. I forgot the word in English. So. Yeah, so other than, than work and uh, focusing on your career, what do you do on your free time? What do you enjoy uh, doing? Do I have free? free time or? It's up to you. Define <laughs> what is free time to you. Oh, man, I'm, uh, um, I'm at the verge of uh, getting myself a label of ADHD. Okay. I'm, as you know, I'm like, a, you know, maybe it's a, sup a sporty background or just personality. I'm hyperactive. I, I can totally bet on that one that... I don't know how many years it's been that I haven't had one job. You know, eight hours working for me, it's not enough. So I have like much more energy uh, than that. So when I have free time, at the moment what I'm involved in, I'm, uh, I got back to the charity program that we do for the kids uh, from Azerbaijan, uh, from these uh, uh, particularly ladies, uh, female students from rural parts of Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm spending some time with that one. As you know, I'm a licensed referee over the weekend. During the weekend, I ref some games. I take care of myself and my mental and uh, physical health, uh, as well as taking my kids, and I love spending time with him and uh, going for the walks and such. And then from time to time, I'm trying to be uh, social impact projects within our company as well. Like soon enough, you will be getting invite if you feel like, I know that you know you like biking, but if you feel like walking, mm -hmm. maybe you'll be attending one of my walking events. So Yeah, let's see, let's see in summer how that goes. And um, it will be also good, you know, to spend time outside just walking. I can't just concentrate on biking. Uh, I'm also planning to play golf, you know, stuff like that. Golf? Oh, wow. I, I would I would make a joke, but I'm not sure if the, <laughs> if the YouTube is going to like my joke. You know, he knows me and my language, so... Well, how did you come with this? Uh, let me nicest way of putting uh, senior habits. <laughs> like that's like for like sixty-five years old uncles or forty-five years old multi-millionaires. We that have fantasy. golf club in our company. Why are you saying this is for sixty-five old people? When they watch this podcast, do you think they will be happy to hear that? I no, I know, mm. I know a friend of mine. She plays it, uh, mm. and I know a couple of other guys who are playing football doing that but i never had this picture of uh, i don't know like uh, you can you, Tiger Woods, you know he plays golf so i don't see that as an issue you know i, I do not see it as an <laughs> issue as well i'm just <laughs> judging my friends choices so <laughs> mm. you know i love cricket right so during the summer i also play cricket with um, uh, our fields and team you so played the cricket with the uh, with our company's party right last uh, yes last, on the summer, summer party yeah yeah, yeah so man. those are the two sports I really like when it comes to team sports, but are you, you know, I want than, are you better than our Indian colleagues or they are they are the really cut for that because one one of them was playing in India and he moved here and plays it here too. So it's only a matter of uh, sessioning, you know. If you session okay. more, you're in form. Okay, okay. Um, but this guy I'm struggling with finding time to spend more on the cricket side. That's why you see I'm moving more on golf because okay, okay. Uh, it's a uh, one person sport. I can just take my clubs and. Okay. Go and play, you know. Okay. Ah, yeah. It's not. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's not. It's like individual sport. Like yeah. one of my friends, the Spanish guy, is runner. So time to time, I invite him for football or this kind of. The guy likes it. He's even going to gym alone. You know, he doesn't mind. But for me, 
you know me right I'm a people person I want to be around people and uh, yeah it's uh, I, it's really hard for me to do individual uh, sports I only learned it during COVID that you know I can actually run you know that's mm-hmm. why I started building up the habit of running yeah we have been talking talking for long today uh, this is our first interview with you uh, what would you checking that we are doing in 30 minutes so yeah what would you want to tell our viewers uh, some some advice or uh, sure, sure, some sure, lessons sure. you would like our viewers to take uh, home today. First of mm. all, you got me on a back foot a bit. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like uh, you did not ask me to prepare for this one. So mm-hmm. anything I say, it's going to be impromptu. It's going to be like spontaneous. <laughs> and mm. thank you for that mm. kind of surprise. But mm. no, you know me that I was born ready. So I will be able to provide something. Uh, of course, uh, I, this is what I'm also trying. So one of my future projects to... Uh, how to help uh, Azeri community here mm-hmm. to get uh, involved in Czech uh, w- culture. Uh, first and foremost is any kind of sport. You see, like you talked about golf, you talked about it's either playing that, following it, watching it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, one of the best things, our common friend Eran, he loves football. He's a Manchester United fan. Right? He's not having the best time at the moment, I know, but uh, he came to the village to watch football. Why? Because in Czech villages, football is like, is like an activity. You, d- you have two choices. Either you're going to go to a big city, like Podjebradi, mm-hmm. Nimburg, Prague, to see something, or you're just going to stay on the radar, stay in your village, go have your klobasa, go ha- the kids would have this parek vrohliku, like they would have the, you know, like the sausage, uh, uh, wine, beer, and you're gonna be watching football, local football team. When I go to rest, I love those atmospheres. About 100 to 50 people are gathering up, and that's a family activity. Mm-hmm. That's what they love to do. So, for my advice, for the kids of my side, get involved in sporty activities, because when you follow whatever checks follow they actually do not care what color you are what nationality or what country you are from they're just gonna because you have something in common Mm -hmm. and especially if you play if you gather around or do some sort of activity it doesn't even have to be sporty activity it can be as well cultural activity there are a lot of volunteering opportunities another our common friend is eva she was great in that now adela i know that she's doing it like volunteering activities, going and collecting garbages, or going and helping in some uh, donation, some um, some of these autism centers or any senior centers. So you basically make a step towards community and asking them to accept you. Trust me, they're going to accept you. So that would have been my message to your followers, uh, anyone who listens to me, in order to for you to learn and improve. Czech language, Czech culture is to do something that locals either meet and do. That way you start collaborating, right? It's gonna be like a two way. You will be talking to them, you will be spending time with them and that way you will be more involved and you wouldn't feel left alone or living in a bubble. Can you imagine like you would only hang out with uh, Zimbabwean community or African community? Mm -hmm. I know that you have your own uh, like a group that yes. you know you're trying to get a fantastic job on that one congratulations on your uh, african organization and i want to do the same for the people from uh, azerbaijan but still i'm doing it because i want to bring them closer to czech culture not uh having them let's say you know like uh just to stay and entertain ourselves definitely not that would have been the first thing to do and a second thing uh to be little bit on a lookout and do not have uh, do not lose that curiosity we have mm-hmm. in our in our geography like learning okay w- what is what is trend where the world is heading is that technology or is that i don't know uh, w- what is what is hot topic all right yeah the social media and all of this uh, is a hot topic and uh, you know like a artificial intelligence not to be very conservative that they're gonna take our jobs definitely they're not uh, they're just gonna help us just like the technology I like uh, I, I follow one guy he's called his name is it's a Turkish guy name is Mehmet Demirkol he comments about football but I love his general culture so much that I follow him everywhere mm-hmm. 
He said one thing, of course, it's a paraphrasing uh, another thing that happened in the world. Basically, he said, when the combine, you know, these machines that the combine, it, tractors, like, you know, came to the field and started taking, so when they introduced those uh, machinery to farming, mm -hmm. farmers were afraid that they are losing their job and they're going to die. A few years later, those farmers became a factory workers. That's how it's gonna happen with the technology and where it's ending the artificial intelligence as well. We will be the guys who are we will be, be the people who are using artificial intelligence either in the same jobs that we are doing or anything else is gonna just shift. We are not gonna be if you use your mind and if you learn and if you follow the trends, I don't think you're gonna lose the job. You're gonna just you have another job, but you're not gonna stay hungry, that's for sure. Yeah, those um good good points you raised there. Thank you. I will ask you one last part. What would you tell to yourself five years ago? Five years ago. Mm. Can we make it more? Five years too young. I mean, five years ago I just moved to Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. What would you tell yourself? Okay. Mm. Go become a referee much earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I got involved in uh, football mm -hmm. as soon as I arrived to Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. That helped me big time in my learning Czech language and Czech culture. But uh, I started, uh, let's say, I should have I should have known that I could do it even more. You know, it, um, it's ironic enough that I learned and perfected my, or not perfected, of course, like improved my Czech during pandemic. Mm -hmm. I had one and a half years like it took to, it started in 2000 early 2000 right i wasted two years i could have done much more in those two years but mm. now i'm catching up now i'm catching up i'm uh, living in the society and uh, you cannot repeat or uh, uh, tour tear it off from me now i belong to czech community and i i enjoy it so that would have been my ne lesson but maybe also look for it <laughs> <laughs> Look for IT job much earlier than than I started. Don't stay yeah. in finance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't mm. stay in, yeah. So these two, but you know, again, looking for an IT job, I say it in a like a quote unquote, right? So follow the trends because I think I was maybe also the young at that time in 2018. I was like 30 years old. It's not yet young, but still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you so much, Elman, today. This was a good session. Thank you, Thank you for the invite, uh, man. I hope our viewers managed... Session? Yes. Really? Are, are you the therapist? Or? <laughs> this is a good session podcast, right? We what? spent more than an hour in this podcast today. I hope our viewers managed to... And the listeners, huh? I yes. Wanna, I want to have it in audio format as yes. well. Yes, so uh, our viewers and our listeners are able to grab one or two points which they can use to relate themselves with your story and you. pick one or two points which they can learn and they will implement it uh, in their life. So with that, uh, we say bye bye. <laughs>